is uh, currently out of the room taking a telephone call. So I will go to my question, um, which is on the appendix one, if we go to page 26, as that the respondents were given the opportunity to comment on any other elements um, received and they put in the table below. And obviously the top five, I think I'm just going for myself here, are quite interested in the unreliableness of public transport, which we've already talked about. Cycle tracks, which is going to be the first time I've ever seen cycle tracks, or the want of them being higher up the agenda. Um, litter, fly tipping, poor sporting facilities, and potholes. Obviously, all these things um, require funding going forward. But the thing about question, the question I have is when that going forwards now, when we talk about our, when we look at the budget, which I'm sure cabinets are already starting doing um, already going forwards, and also when we look at our corporate strategy or anything like that. How are these responses being filtered into that process so that when we come to look at the budget, we can go, well, actually, we've got this response as well. It's not just the response that we've had on this budget, budget, um, our budget consultation, but also on this, because obviously these all things cost money, as we've already discussed. So I just want to know how are these questions, these responses going to filter into our budgets and our corporate plans and all the other sets of plans that we have to have um, as a local authority. So. I, I'm not sure who wants to take that one. Janine? Yeah, I will um, attempt to answer that, um, uh, Councillor Bledsoe. Of course, we can in, uh, include this. Oh, sorry, I'm saying Bledsoe. Council Chair, Councillor Blundell. I apologies, apologies. It's because I've answered so many questions to Councillor Bledsoe's <laughs> Apologies. I don't think either one of us wants to have that comparison. <laughs> um. Apologies. Um, yeah, of course, uh, as when we do the budget consultation, um, we can factor these uh, pieces in as well. Uh, not a problem at all. We haven't done the, the one piece yet. We're going to have um, a, a big conversation about budget, something the cabinet are planning. Uh, and of course, we can feed this in because, again, it's um, um, a, a consultation and uh, uh, information that, that is important. Uh, particularly with regards to some of the community pieces, street lighting potholes, etc. So not a problem. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to, to feed this in to the community section uh, to um, consultation as part of that. OK, thanks. For that. And we'll look forward to, I'm sure, when we have that, when we have Brett meetings and when we have um, our budget meeting, which I believe is penciled in for January. Um, but. Um, Councillor Bletso, you I have you down as our next question on the appendix, which is about sort of the marketing of the of the policy um, of of this consultation effort. Yes, we'll have to get name badges so people can tell us apart. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it it is based around the marketing of because um, I re, you know I understand where we are in this journey of of the, the plan. Uh, how are we going to? manage residents expectations on this about what we are able to deliver i know we've spoken about you know the ring fencing money and the, the you know the pot is dry and and everything else and and i'm really mindful that we don't create false hope because the valley's communities have been underserved by generations of central governments you know how, however you want to look at it that the areas have been badly treated we are giving them an opportunity here as a as a plan of how we're going to not even reinvigorate them, but possibly just bring them up to the level that towns have enjoyed for a, a number of decades. So how are we going to lay this out? How are we going to tell them that there is no, you know, golden road down down the hill? How are we going to manage their expectations on what they are going to genuinely be able to see at the end product of this? Well, it's it's an enormous challenge, absolutely enormous challenge. And that was what we were at great pains to say as part of our engagement piece was, you know, we will do our best. We made it very clear that there's no defined money. We'll have to work with partners. We'll have to use this strategy as a way of applying for grant funding in the future. And it is a very good um, document to use that um, when we are applying for um uh, work uh, and projects in the future but I'm afraid it is the whole well everything we do in the council currently is about managing residents expectations um, if I may just 
just explain about the community's directors. And, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard this before. So apologies. You know, I have 40% less budget, 40% less staff, but 100% of the work still. So what is very clear moving forward is that I, we have to manage what the council delivers. And this will include any of the work that we do in, the, in that strategy and anything that we put in the valleys. What we do in that strategy has to be deliverable, has to be realistic, absolutely. So that's going to be a key thing for us going forward. So from now until the autumn, when we work with the consultants to get a strategy together that is meaningful, that'll be key. And what I would like to suggest Chair, if you would, is that we bring this back to you for a pre-decision scrutiny before we take it on to on to cabinet in, in later on this year. Because I think um, having had this session with you now, it would benefit from that before we, we take it on uh, to, to approve. So uh, in short, it's going to be difficult to ensure that this strategy is meaningful, but managing expectations is, is the key thing that we need to do. Thanks, Dr. I think you've really the point there is obviously you have got 40 percent less budget the staff where you know we, we can go on and on but that's why we need to make sure that we manage these expectations because what we deliver has to be a deliverable but also has to be sort of in that tangible and people can see because of the way we say oh we've done that um it means nothing and council Butts has got wants to come back in so i'll let him come back in yeah no no and and really heartened by the couple of words that janine used there it, this has to be meaningful and, and I thank you for that answer because that fundamentally yeah. is the most important thing I'll take out of today. There's no point over promising on this. This has to be meaningful. And that's very nice to hear. Thank you, Janine. My pleasure. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you for that. Um, I've run out of pre questions. So um, does anyone have any questions from the committee, which makes also the idea that we had the break just then a little silly. Um, but there we are. Um, <laughs> Councillor Bletzer, you've got your hand back up. On the appendix yet, are we? We are on the appendix oh, now. Apologies, yeah, I missed. I missed the the, the thought. So um, it mentions in the appendix about how uh, how the message was got out about the engagements and the communications, and it does make reference to the fact that the leader at the time sent out his regular emails to people and included MPs and 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 how to engage with people. Were um, local members, and I know we tried to work out earlier how many local members there are for the, the Three Valleys, were local members uh, engaged in that process, asked to use their social media platforms or to use their platform uh, generally uh, to try and get people to engage with the consultation? Yeah, Chair, I'm going to ask Delith whether she would, could answer this for us, because I know that we did consult with local members, and I think maybe she can um, add a bit more um, narrative to that. Yeah, Del has got her hand up, so I'll go over to Del. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, I um, certainly local members had their own session with the consultants prior to the public engagement sessions and um, aware that some, not all, local members then did attend the engagement sessions within their communities. I, I can't confirm one way or another whether um the local members were explicitly asked to use their channels um i i'll have a chat with our consultation team as to um how that is normally conducted but i'll i'll, I'll yeah i'll find out on that in terms of the sort of explicit nature of how um uh that question was asked yeah, they'll come back to us on that. That's fine. Thank you for that. Um, on local members, we're bringing Councillor Martin Williams. Obviously, looking down the list, only Councillor Jenkins, I believe, apologies if I missed anyone who isn't here today, actually represents a Valley's community on this committee. Um, not to say that our, in, our input is not Valley, because it definitely is. And I often like to think Kevin Glass is a bit of a Valley with the amount of hills we've got. Um, but are they going to get their own separate briefing on this? And they get their own sort of so they, they they know what's going on with the valley strategy because i think i got to 12 local members um so i just there's, there's a big part of the council that need to sort of be involved especially with especially councillor good who, who did start this whole process off when he was the cabinet member uh yes i um just to come back on that as i said so the the local members had their own session with the consultants in advance of the public meetings um 
and and they did attend uh, many of them did attend the the meetings as well the local members will have the opportunity to come back in on, on the strategy and the the uh, once we've got a final draft of it um they'll be able, that that that'll be a key point for them to be re-engaged in terms of sort of what that draft looks like yeah as long as they're kept in the loop i think that's it's mightily important yeah uh, yeah um, absolutely councillor far you've got your hand up there do you want to come in yeah it, it's just to say like 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 you said um chair quite conscious that there, there isn't anybody here from the valleys and janine did mention that when the strategy is done she's going to bring it back here for a pre-scrutiny and i'm just wondering i'm not sure if the process allows it or not if we could invite the local members to attend that meeting so we can hear the people who are scrutinizing it can hear from them what their views are it's just a suggestion which i think will be really helpful for the committee if we had the local members here taking part thanks chair yeah thank you for that council at least made note of that so we'll um, i'm pretty sure we can just send an extra invite but um i'm sure we'll find out in due course uh councillor martin williams you've got your hand up you wait patiently um good question yes thank you chair just an observation there it, it, obviously an, an omission there really in the, in the consultation was it? Plus, local members should have been uh, a cohort who were, who were taught through that but but that's for another day. Looking at this, and again, it's, it's maybe not a question. I can frame it as a question if you like, but I think, uh, you know, this was brought here to, to gauge our views and, and, and what have you. It's really interesting that when you look at the three main sections about um, uh, what could we do better or what could be better in the Valley or what services would you like to see? Uh, and the other one was any other comments. It's quite, you go quite far down the list before people who responded to this are talking about employment opportunities. Uh, the, the top almost, I think, in the three lists, they're all about better transport links, uh, better maintained roads, better active travel, the rest of it. This seems, I don't know if it's depressing or not, but it's, I, I, think, I think it's fairly insightful. But there does seem to be almost an acceptance that you have to travel to work. Uh, and maybe I'm drawing an inference that's not there, but you, you're, quite, you're quite far down the list before people talk about um talk about employment opportunities um they so either they're very satisfied with their employment opportunities but i don't think so because then in 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 the transport you've got 55.1 percent who travel up the valley every day presumably to work you know so so i think that's quite an interesting um it's like right now i can ask what people think about that but i, I don't i don't necessarily have to ask it's just it's just jumped out of me now that that uh, you know and it's trying to be positive that 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 this is this is something perhaps I didn't expect. I would have expected perhaps um, more people to be to be talking about employment opportunities, and and you see you see travel, and then you see local entertainment and and recreation. But as I said, it's 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 really just jumped out at me at how how low a priority that seems to be, and 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 it it would be interesting to explore why that is. Janine Dallas, you've got anything? you want to add to that or is it... oops yeah. yeah i'm happy i'm happy to add to that i think really it i think councillor williams is right actually specifically talking about employment it is lower down but however i do think it's implied with improved public transport links um i think that's that's implied that people want to to leave the valleys to go to to go out for employment opportunities, I think is probably what that implies. Um, and then regular maintenance of roads, pathways, improved cycle and walking routes. You know, those are the things that that people care care about. Um, yeah, indeed, it'll be very interesting to get uh, underneath the skin of this now to put a strategy together, because in particular, some of those things like the, the, the thing that most people mentioned, look, improved public transport links. Well, of course, that is very challenging for us. Uh, coming back to the managing expectation piece, because we don't run public transport. Um, and particularly some of the valleys like the Garouis can, you know, it doesn't have a train. So it it, ha it is very highly reliant on bus services there. So um yeah, it, it that's that's key going forward. But I think I think you're right, Councillor Williams. I when I looked down some of this, I think I was a little surprised that some of those things like employment and training weren't weren't higher up at the list. So yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot, Jean. Um okay. 
we're on the appendix, so I, I, just for clarity, so for everyone where Did anyone have any further questions? For Martin, Martin, Councillor Williams. It is another observation. I didn't. I put my hand down because it wasn't a follow-on, but it, 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 it is an observation, and and it's sorry. There's a car going past. It's it's really about you know people feeling pride in their valleys, and I think it comes out through there. People pride in place and and all of that. Are we? Uh, no, not we're not in danger, but I think it, I think it's important that we really <clears throat> don't make the mistake of lumping the three valleys into one when we move forward. I think we talk about a valley strategy, but I think it's very really important that we don't do that. I mean, mm. I, I did. I just did some some some, some sat nav, and so we've we've got a you know significant investment in my state town hall, and that's clearly you know a landmark investment in the valleys, but. It's actually quicker to get from Coity to my stake than it is from Blygarra to my stake or Nantum Oil to my stake. So actually, those cross valley connections are are pretty poor, even though perhaps we we consider it to be almost the same place sometimes when we look mm. at valleys, valleys gateway, and, and and what have you. So I just again just an observation that that we just need to be mindful how yeah. we frame this going forward. No, I think you're absolutely spot on there. It's one strategy, but three distinct places, three different valleys, some shared issues, of course, but some very distinct issues. So you're right, it's one strategy, but three valleys are, are included. And I think you're right. And we must must seek to maintain the identity of each of those those places. Yeah. We agree on that final point there. No, that's very good. Uh, does anyone have any further questions from the committee before we sort of close this item and move on to our recommendations and, and thoughts? No, I'm shaking heads in here. I'm not seeing hands rush up. Okay, so on that note, we'll end uh, this agenda item. So thank you very much, uh, Janine, Guy, and Dallas, and Councillor Farr. You all have my have my permission now to leave. Um, so well, you can stay if you want, but I'm pretty sure you've probably got other things to do. Um, so I will let them go. Then we'll thank move you, on. Chair. No worries. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Okay. Right. I'm going to hand over to Lucy, who's going to help us with our conclusions and recommendations. Thank you, Chair. Um, so there's been lots of discussion and questions and conversation um, during the meeting, so I'll summarise the key points. Um, and then I'll just open it up to members. Um, so uh, we had some questions. We had a question at the beginning of the meeting um, from Councillor Clark regarding the um, properties improvement grant um, and how many properties needed work. Um, an officer did come back um, to uh, to say that they were trying to make the grants more um, bespoke or given a spoke uh, approach um, in helping people come forward um, and shaping the grant. Um, possibly making it a more flexible offer. Um, and then there was discussion around um, the funding for um, the public transport system um, and what other plans have been to improve the uh, improve the public transport system. Um, and discussion on the bus improvement grant and the routes in the valley. Um, and I believe um, Janine had offered um, to speak to um, to another officer to uh, to come back with exact amounts on the um, the funding allocated um, to those routes. Um, sorry, bear with me while I skim while I skim through it. Um, so we talked about uh, the authority's vision for the valleys and looking at a different approach. And then there was lots of discussion on the um, the cost of the consultants. Um, and we were advised, the officer advised they didn't have a value that, that they could give us right then, but they could come back with that. And also the uh, tender assessment report um, could be sent over. Um, there was discussion with about engagement in uh, business uh, Wales and could be that be something that was picked up going forward. A 
again, there's lots more there was lots more discussion on the cost and the consultants and and what they were used for um, at this stage. Um, Chair, you mentioned the paragraph uh, the graph, sorry, on page twenty six of the elements and the areas, um, and those um, uh, all those things were uh, requiring funding going forward. Um, and these being filtered into the budget and corporate plans, which um, the corporate director agreed um, could be fed in, so that we could be a recommendation we put forward. Um, there was talk about uh, managing public expectations. Um, and on the back of that, um, the corporate director uh, suggested bringing this back, um, bringing the strategy back for pre-decision scrutiny later on this year um, before it goes to uh, before it goes to cabinet. And uh, the cabinet member uh, made the suggestion that perhaps uh, some of the um, uh, members, uh, committee members outside of this committee, um, the local members for the valleys could be uh, included in that meeting. Um, and then uh, just lastly, there was discussion about um, how the message uh, was communicated to the um, to the public through local members um, and whether, whether they were engaged in the process. Um, and I think um, the officers did answer that by saying they'd come, they, there were sessions um, and there would be sessions um, following the, the draft of, of the strategy. Um, so I think that's everything from me. I apologise if I've missed anything out, but I'll pass back to yourself, Chair and members. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you for that, Lucy. Um, Councillor Williams. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I don't know if I missed it. Did did you um, say, Lucy, that um, it was going to be? I asked for a figure for the funding that had been spent on the bus routes in the valleys. So yeah, if we get that figure, we'll have a balance from the 1.6 to know what. Yeah, um, Jean's going to write to Kevin Sales and get that figure, and yeah. we'll get that back. Yeah. Just just while I'm on, it would be an idea as well if we we're going to. Uh, go out to consultation to perhaps in whatever area it is to send a graphic to um, local members that can be shared via Facebook with a mm -hmm. link in it but a nice graphic not yeah. just something that's written that catches people that you know something that'll catch people's eye that they say well let's have a look at that because if you just put a load of text people don't don't even look at it then there's sort of the responses that goes out from the that used to go out from the former leader, I don't know if the new leader is doing it yet, but like we send out, oh, here's a graphic to go with yeah. that. Yeah. So like we do for social media, there's the bit and then there's the graphic. So there's a separate graphic for local members to highlight um, yeah. consultation events. I, th I think it just catches people's eye and they, they, they'll click on it and have a look rather than just scroll past a text, uh, anything that's just got all text in yeah. it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, Okay, Councillor Martin Williams. Thank you, Chair. It, it's picking up on something a few of us said earlier, uh, and, and 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 it touches something you said as well about using this data for prep and other purposes. Um, I think some of this stuff that we've received from from the consultants is pretty vanilla. I don't think there's anything particularly um, unusual about the questions we asked, and. And I do wonder whether a recommendation is, and it, you know, I think it is positive, is is that we can, we should perhaps be gathering this information as a matter of course, uh, and whether we employ, whether there's someone in perhaps, perhaps it's not transport planning, perhaps it's 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 someone in Alex Rawlins' team or or something like that, or even if we bring someone in, uh, and we we gather and maintain core core data basically for data like this for all areas and you might you might add things then you know you you drill into you drill into you know what people think about dog fouling and the rest of it and then when we do use consultants we say before you do anything please have a look at our data and 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 draw insights out of that and i think that may go some way one to help us know understand our you know corporately understand our our area better but also get get better value for money out out of the consultants we bring in and i think you know a, a relatively modest investment in a data analyst or whatever you might call them would would, would not only save us money in long term but make us a, a more effective authority yeah so instead of starting at the bottom they sort of started further up the consultants we can try and get more more data i think that's a good point 
pop that down. Uh, Councillor Clark. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, sh shouldn't we be in recommendations um, suggesting a way forward from here? Um, that's that's the sort of um, the thing that I, I gathered that we should be recommending how we move forward from here. What what really does concern me is um, some some of the words that have been used coming from the corporate director um, about it being realistic and deliverable, and managing expectations, enormous challenge, uh, managing aspirations, uh, and it's down to funding. So um, I'm rather concerned, and and it's sort of. Um, I, I go back to the to the uh, Kyra Heat project where loads of money was spent, and all that we got out of that was a toolkit um, that that um, fair enough can be used across uh, different things. So um, I, I think we should be recommending some way forward from here. But I am concerned that um, uh, aspirations will be raised and things just won't happen. Mm. It is almost natural when we start having these conversations with communities that aspirations are 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 are, are raised all, uh, from the beginning. I think speaking to people about my state town hall, I, I've heard everything from there's going to be a multiplex cinema to you know a satellite off the roof. You know, it's so uh, it, it's we need to have these conversations. Um, but yeah, I think you're right about the whole where do we go forwards with this now? Um, so with this strategy, and, and so hopefully members can, can come forward with what recommendations. I think we've heard some good ones about how we use data going forwards and how we sort of build that into all our plans um, and, and, and so forth. But is, are we sort of now, does anyone have any sort of suggestions about what other things we can do going forward to make the strategy worthwhile and not just something that we've done and we've just all spent two hours scrutinising for no other reason? Um, Councillor Davis, you've got your hand up. Thanks, Chair. Um, on the basis of um, Councillor Martin Williams' point, um, other local authorities close to this local authority um, see uh, the gathering of data and evidence as a matter of course on a daily basis because they see it as the foundation, as I said earlier on, of any good project planning, anything they do, um, if, if it doesn't have a statutory reason, then it's got to have a data or evidence reason. We don't see it like that. And that's a problem, I think. And I think this committee has seen examples of that. I certainly have over the last couple of years, whereby the data and the evidence is not it's not either not there or it's not being used properly. There's loads of data and evidence out there that hopefully these consultants now will latch on to, locally and nationally. It's not rocket science. So I take uh, Councillor Martin Williams' point about um, a this project going forward with more data in order to uh, justify what he wants to do, but also in terms of the council learning and moving forward on the basis of a solid foundation base, which is about good evidence, good data, and, and planning on that basis. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Oh, Thanks. Sorry, one more point. Yeah. Uh, an interesting point you raised about the lack of um, members from the valleys. You think it was a total of, a, of 12 across the council, is it? Or more well, than 13, that? 13, I think. Yeah, think, right. Yeah. So perhaps we need to re rethink the composition of, of some of these scrutiny committees. If we've only got one uh, member who's a Valley's resident, then perhaps we should, should somehow rethink that issue because one out of for, for one scrutiny is, is not good, is it really? Uh, yeah, we do try to, not to get bogged down in these things, but we do try and obviously go for committees that members are interested in rather than geographical spread. And obviously then we have the political uh, balance as well. So I guess it, it should, it's up to groups really to make sure that although some have are more geographically widespread than others, and that's just natural way of things. Um, and obviously then we have independence, um, independence, independence of independent groups. Um, so I think it's always a difficult balance and act, but I think it's one for groups to sort of work on. And, and obviously the, the Conservative in the corner. Um, <laughs> uh, so, but it's, a, it's an interesting point for going forward. Um, Councillor Steve Bletter. Yeah, I think also as well on that, I think we've got two members from the Valleys who are not here today. So I think, I think it's unfortunate yeah. in, in that respect. And I think, 
Yeah, no, I t totally agree. It's, I think it's just one of those things, isn't it? Um, just building on what Councillor Clark said about how we move forward and, and again, touching on things that other councillors have made, I would certainly support a recommendation of this group that we encourage the officers to move forward to create a meaningful and deliberable strategy. I think we have to take something positive out of this. Um, and, and, and a plan for the, the valleys is important. Um, we, you know, we may disagree with, with some members on on how we get to that. You know, we can all have opinions on whether we employ consultants, how much we cost, how much per consult, you know, how many response it's cost us. We can all have those debates, but we have to move forward with something tangible. Um, you know, we have a Bridgentown master plan. I think we've got the Port Call seafront regeneration. We've got these projects. We need to make sure that the, the authority does have a meaningful and deliverable plan for the valleys, for the three valleys. And I think I would certainly build on what Councillor Clark has said, that that could be the recommendation, that that we learn again from gaps in, in how we've got to this point, but that we encourage the officers and the current administration cabinet to, to produce a meaningful, deliverable plan to regenerate the valleys. Yeah, and obviously, and with that predetermination, predetermining scrutiny, predecision scrutiny, sorry, not predetermination, predecision scrutiny, we can have, and then also sort of mould into that how we see that, and if it even is working, we can sort of try and test it to see if it's deliverable and tangible and and all and all that. Councillor Davis, you still have your hand up. That's all right. I, I try and lower your hand for me, but it, it's, my computer's all the way over there. Um, uh, Councillor Pratt. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm somewhat struggling with a recommendation because we've basically just got a consultation report, which, if I'm understanding correctly, the officers haven't fully scrutinised. So it, it, it's difficult to go, right, this is the data that I've got. This is go going to work. But um, I, I understand where other councillors are coming from that, that we need to come up with a recommendation. But um, from my experience from fourth core regeneration, I think there's a lot to be said about little and often rather than a great big, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we in fourth core have been waiting over 30 years for regeneration. It's nice to see things are starting to be built, but waiting 30 years is, is, is certainly a long time. So I, I think a lesson from that and something that's hugely important if we're starting this from scratch for, for the Valleys communities is little and often is probably a better route than promising the world yeah. and we'll just see what when we can deliver it. So, yeah, little and often is my suggestion. Just, you know, the, you know it, it's um, the small little wins that you get and slowly people, well, you know, they're trying, you know, yeah. you know, it, it, it's yes, we know times are tough, but, you know, they are making improvements yeah. and let's see what's happening in the future. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. And as, as Janine said, um, to, in answer to one of the questions, regeneration doesn't have to be a my state town hall. It doesn't have to be a, some big project. It can be a little thing. It could be there's um, there, there's only one shop, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, in the whole Ogmore Valley, there's only one sort of supermarket corner shop in the whole Ogmore Valley. Why, you know, isn't there a, but there's a co-op in the Garrow Valley, so why can't, like, a co-op or something like be moved into there and have those conversations? And that's regeneration without some massive project. It's a shop opening. Um, so, as you said, little and often is, is, a, is a good way of phrasing it. Uh, Councillor Martin-Williams. Yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, kind of. Am I building on that, or am I the opposite? Am I opposing that? Let, I, I I asked Councillor Farr uh, what her vision was for the valley, and it might have seemed unkind. But what I was trying to tease out was: is there a simple, is there a simple coherent vision for the valleys, uh, and how does it fit into our overall vision for redevelopment, and how is that articulated? And it was obvious that from my perspective, that it was difficult to articulate. So I do think the recommendation from my perspective is that we do need to have, yeah, we need to have little and often, we do, but we need to make sure all those little bits are done yeah. often in the right direction. And what's right for our strategy for the valleys may not be right for, you know, the, the, the cafe culture we're trying to establish on, on fourth calls. Do you see what I mean? And, yeah. and I think we just need to have a simple roadmap that we can articulate uh, 
so under which all of the little bits can happen. And, uh, and, and yeah, it might have seen a bit unkind, but if, if, it's, if it's hard to answer, it's probably because it's not there. <laughs> That's I would suggest. Yeah, no, I think you're right on the roadmap. I think there's like every all these little bits. We can't just put little bits in isolation and expect them all to well, that's a strategy. It's not. It's just putting little stuff here and there. So it's all going to lead to a to a to an end point. Uh, so all got to follow the strat uh, follow the strategy. It's all got to follow a plan uh, to come together. I think you should lose caught up on typing. Yep. Okay. Um, does anyone have any more recommendations? Because I think we've sort of formulated a bit of a recommendation there of all those. Council Pat to Council Pat and Council Williams's points. Obviously, um, Lucy's informed me that these sort of get written up, then come back to us. So we can always sort of change if the wording is not right. So we don't need to get the wording exactly correct today. Um, but Council Better. We all seem to be building on the previous speaker's yeah. contributions, don't we? And I, I think that's how we work quite well in the last two and a bit years, actually. Um, I think we're coalescing around a kind of resolution here that is. As Councillor Clark said, a deliverable and meaningful plan. As Councillor Williams says, that has a vision for the the values. And as Councillor Pratt said, that is deliverable through small and meaningful contributions. Mm -hmm. And I think if we are able to put that recommendation forward for this cabinet, then we've done our job in scrutinising what's mm -hmm. quite a bare bones report to us today, because we don't have the details. We have the details behind the details that are going to come. So we can't scrutinise what people want in the valleys or, or what these, in, these um, I don't see industry, these community leaders have said, because we don't have it. But we have the opportunity here to shape it and, and how it can be go, gone forward. And I think if we can coalesce around what's been said by other people, then we've actually got something that could be, from our point of view, meaningful and deliverable as well. Uh, and I'd certainly be a, a, a proposer or, or whatever of that, that we can coalesce around all these words that we've used here um, to give the officers and hopefully the cabinet some kind of direction. Yeah, no, I, think, I think we're all in agreement on that. Um, I haven't heard any sort of disagreement or, or from anyone. So I think that's we can work out the final word and then I'd certainly still send these all out and we can discuss and debate via email about um, if the word is correct or we need to change it or what have you. Um, so unless anyone's got anything else they want to add, I think we'll move on. Okay. Last, let's see then, let's put their hand up. No, okie dokie then. So this is agenda item six, the cor corporate parenting champion nomination. Lucy. Thank you, Chair. So the committee has requested to nominate one member as, it, as its corporate parenting champion to represent the committee as an invitee at meetings of the Cabinet Committee Corporate Parenting. The role of the corporate parenting champion is to represent their overview and scrutiny committee in discussions regarding items relating to children in care and care leavers. The role of the champion is also considered, uh, considers how all services within the remit of scrutiny affect children in care and care leavers and encourage their own committee to keep their corporate parenting role in mind while participating in scrutiny. I'll hand back to you, Chair, for nominations. Fabulous. Um, do we have a nomination? Oh, Councillor Walter. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'd like to nominate the existing member, Councillor Pratt. Fabulous. Uh, Councillor Davis? Uh, seconded. Fabulous. Uh, first and second, any other nominations? No, and then by the power invested me, well done, Councillor Pratt. Uh. <laughs> uh, agenda item seven, obviously I declared a prejudicial interest in this, so we have to take a nomination for a chair. Oh, sorry, Lucy, didn't take a nomination for a chair. <laughs> I do, yeah. Um, so as the chair has said, um, as he has a presidential interest in this item, the committee will need to nominate another chair to temporarily chair the meeting. So please, can I therefore ask for nominations from the committee for a chair for item seven? Can I nominate Councillor Colin Davis, please? And can I have a seconder, please? I second that. So if everyone is happy for Colin Davis to take the chair, we'll just let the chair leave the room one moment. Eddie, and then if Councillor Davis, if you'd like to read out the procedure for item seven, please. Uh, 
Apologies. I'll ask the scrutiny officer to present the report. I'll then call upon members who indicate they wish to speak by clicking on the raise hand icon in turn. Thank you. So the purpose of this report is to present the committee with the cabinet response to the recommendations made by the committee on the call-in of the decision of cabinet of 12th of March 2024 in relation to the report on the proposed use of land transaction transfers protocol with Cardiff Capital Region for land at Brimmenin and Brincathin reported to Cabinet on the 16th of April 2024. The committee is asked to note the Cabinet response attached to Appendix A to the report. Any issues or questions from the committee? I think it's just uh, for Norton, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully, we won't have too many of those uh, going forward, but we'll see. Um, so, I assume that was everything fine? Yeah. Fabulous. And so, we will move to agenda item eight, which is forward. Thank you, Chair. So following on from members' consideration of the forward work programme at the previous meeting, the forward work programme for this committee is attached as Appendix A. The subject overview and scrutiny committee's forward work programmes will be included in the next report to corporate overview and scrutiny committee with any updates from each SOC meeting included. The recommendations monitoring action sheet is attached as Appendix B to track responses to the committee's recommendations at the previous meetings. I'll hand back to Chair for any questions from members. Thank you for that, Lucy. Um, Councillor Bletso, you've got your hand up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, two uh, items from me on the Forward Work Programme. One, I note that on the 30th of September 2024, we're due to discuss housing, affordable, accessible, social. Um, can I work with you in the next couple of weeks to try and get an answer from November 2022? Sure. We've had lots of conversations since you've been appointed as chair. Uh, this isn't a reflection on the existing chair or the, any of the fantastic staff who support us. Uh, but please, can we have an answer to the question that we asked? What will then be nearly two years previous? Um, and secondly, on the forward work program, um, I mentioned previously in, in the meeting that we've discussed the regeneration of Port Call. Today, we've discussed the plan for the regeneration of the valleys. We've discussed my steg. There's nothing on here to scrutinise the regeneration of Bridgend Town Centre. Uh, nothing at all. And I would please ask that we do, in the five-year term, at some point, scrutinise the regeneration of Bridgend Town Centre. So if that could be added to the forward work programme, it would be hugely appreciated. Yeah, we can look at an uh, update on the master plan. Um, uh, Councillor uh, Clark. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, mine was on the housing update as well. Uh, it mentions about progress on empty homes in the county borough, including the number of empty homes policy and the grants available. Um, we're specifically sort of homing in on, on, em on empty homes. Can we also put in the churches and chapels because those are those are included in in um, I think in the in the list if you like and I don't want it just specifically just on on empty homes empty properties it should when I say empty properties I think that's that's widening it a bit much but if we put including church you know churches and chapels because there are or there was about twenty three empty churches and chapels around the county borough so um if people will agree because obviously those can be converted into homes so um if we could be a little bit more specific on that yeah thanks for that kind of i agree with you because there's actually a block of uh, flats going into a church in Pencoid, which i've seen the construction of over the last few weeks um which actually, oddly enough i think i gave, was on the planning committee when we get planning for which is quite interesting to see that actually come to life um on the housing update, we had a chat yesterday, me and Lucy, and, and that we, we need to sort of defer, figure out what else that we want to put in. Obviously, update on the empty homes and obviously adding on the churches 
and and and, and rectories and, and all that. But um, is there anything else in the housing update? Obviously, Bar Councillor Bletto's question that he's been waiting two years for an answer on. Um, is there anything else that we need, want to add in on that before we ask for the report? Because obviously, we've got to ask for the report in the next week or so, so that it can be written for our next meeting. Correct. So I will carry on down the list, but if anyone has anything to add, just obviously put your hands back up. Yeah, on, on my point, on my point. So on page 75, it looks at potential items, and one of them is values to cost operational practices. I don't necessarily want to see another presentation from V2C, but I would like to see from our officers their views on V2C's operational practices, because I do, I do think that their operational practices is very much um, part of, of the issue around, uh, which Councillor Bledsoe has raised, around housing update. So if you're asking for an addition to that, I'd, I would suggest it's already there mm. in the report. So we just move that across the values to cost operational practices from a from a BCBC perspective, officers' perspective, in that update. And I'd like, I'd like to hear from officers what they, what they what subjectively perhaps think about what's going on there, kind of positive or negative responses they get when they make requests, that kind of thing. Because speaking personally as a member, I was really dissatisfied with the last engagement session we had. We asked four reasonable questions across everybody in the room. Uh, your partner, Freya, she asked one. Reasonable questions, and we got unreasonable answers, quite honestly. And I'm, I'm, I'm still disappointed about that. And in fact, when it came to the next engagement session, I asked for it to be moved and to a, a more acceptable time for those members who were working and, and a, a member who couldn't attend that face-to-face uh, -face engagement session asked me to do that and another colleague member asked if um, it could be hybrid to allow people to uh, join the meeting from other parts of the borough. Both requests were turned down. <laughs> hybrid and moving the the time to a more acceptable time for those members working, which I think is extremely unreasonable, because we all do it now, don't we? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, 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 I might even just suggest we sort of widen that to so not just VTC, but all social landlords, because obviously we don't just work with VTC, we've got Pobble, we've got, uh, I've got quite a bit of um, Coastal, there's another one, but Coastal's just over the road, aren't they? And, and, and I've forgotten another one now, but yeah, um, Havard. I've got quite a bit of Havard in my world, more Havard than I have Valley's to Coast, actually. Um, so I think we widen it up to all social housing, housing landlords. I think that'll be a good add on to that topic there. Uh, Councillor Martin Williams, you've got your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Chair. We have, a, I know we've got a report, information report on the CAT, CAT transfer and update. I, I'm not sure, I'm quite sure, I couldn't quite work out when that was due. Is that just at some point, is it? I, I, uh, I, I do wonder whether we need to have an ability to, to ask questions on that, so rather than just a report sort of dropped on us. Um, it's a, I think it's quite a while since we've had a good look under the bonnet of CAT. I don't think it, I don't, in fact, I don't think it has come to this committee since, since I've been here. Good question, actually. Yeah, I think, I think I, I think I, when I was the chair in the last term, I think we looked a bit at CAT. But I think we could sort of look at that, see if we can add that into into an agenda item. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Well, that's the, if the that's housing the one's out of. Briefing session instead. Yeah. Give them an opportunity to ask questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that away and have a look and see what we can do with that, because I think you're right. I think we need to. It's been going on for a few years now, the CATS process. So we must have some sort of information and update on where we are with that. Um, sorry, with you. Uh, Councillor Walter. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, not taking anything away from uh, Councillor Stephen Blatsoe, I agree with his suggestion around um, Bridgeham Town Centre, but um, if you look ahead, the last scheduled meeting is April 25, um, which means probably the next one following that will be July 25, a year from now. And I really think we would need to have a, um, a, good, uh, a good session in respect of Puthcourt Grand Pavilion. Uh, which is currently in the middle of strip out, but by then should be into construction phase. And if it's not, then we really will have a problem. So um, I would make a suggestion that we uh, we we have a good look at that as well, uh, particularly given the light of the, uh, um, the 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 project at my state town hall and lessons learned. Thank you. Absolutely, you keep a a watch a watching brief on 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 that as with all our large scale projects going forward yeah not talking about a massive session but certainly um, a report and questions yeah. thanks 
Absolutely. Um, Councillor Davis, should we hand back up? Uh, Chair, again, uh, apologies, I think, to this uh, committee. Uh, so uh, DFGs were raised at, um, I'm, I'm looking at it again, was raised at um, Scrutiny 2 last week, and I said, um, yeah, we do need to look at it. And I was reminded by um, support that um, I'd raise it at this committee as well. So, um, so I would suggest that Scrutiny 2 might be better mm considering an update on DFGs from the social care perspective, because yeah. that focuses on social care. But I don't want to take anything away from this committee, because no, I says, no, suggested a year first. So I'd be interested to hear what people have got to say about that. Thank no, you. It, it, it's a good point. It's something that we need to keep a watch on, because no doubt we've all probably had a resident who's in need of a DFG come and get in contact with us about the wait they've had. Um, so it's interesting to see. The reason it's not on here yet, it's on, obviously, items requested. It hasn't been put in yet because basically because of that because we're we're having the chairs meet and discuss who has it i i i'm of the mind if there's gaps in in SOC 2 they have it um so and maybe members could be made aware of it in case we wanted to go to attend as well um because i know we've done that in the past um so yeah we're just waiting for a chairs meeting to discuss that um we haven't had uh, a chance yet as as a three to meet about about that um Councillor Martin Williams. Yeah, just 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 uh, opportunism, really. If Councillor Walter Walter wants to talk about Porth Call, uh, uh, in light of my stake, it is on the 14th, fifth, seventeenth February, my birthday actually. My stake uh, is being discussed, so maybe there can be a a, a brief discussion about Porth Call the same day. Um, you know, even if it's just a quick update and direct lessons that have been learned, maybe. Yeah, that might be helpful. Yeah, it will be the same officers when I would have thought. So we can, uh, we'll definitely take that away and we'll have a look at it, see if that's, see if that's doable from February. Yeah, this is just making a note of that now. All right, no worries. Fabulous. Okie dokie. Has anyone got anything else on the forward work programme? Or has anyone got anything else they'd like to add in the housing update? Um, so we can go away and ask the, the officers to put that report together for us. It seems like a really long way away, except late September, but... Well, a year before we know it. Okay, look, I'm not seeing anyone's hands going up, so we'll move on then. If Lucy's got everything, fabulous, and, and we'll go to agenda item nine, which is urgent items, which I have not been informed of any urgent items because there's a deadline for urgent items, which I always find funny. Um, so, <laughs> so on that note, I'll call this meeting to a close at 18:34. Thank you very much, everyone, for your attendance. Uh, I will see you at the next one, which apparently is in September, in like in 30th of September. So I'll see. If we don't see you before then, see you there. Bye. Bye. Thanks, John Paul.